Hey everyone, we're going to start this guide of the differences between metals and nonmetals with the periodic table. Uh, sometimes on a periodic table you will see a zigzag line uh, over here on the right, um, and actually hydrogen should be over here too, inside the uh, right side. And everything in this box is what we call nonmetals. These are all nonmetals, and everything on the left of this zigzaggy line are metals. Now there are some elements that are near the line that kind of are in a gray area, but for this video it's just a zigzag line. Metals are conductors. Uh, this means they let electricity flow through them. And nonmetals are insulators, which is the opposite. They don't let electricity flow through as easily. Which is why if you cut open a wire, the middle will be made of copper, which is a metal, allowing the flow of electricity. And the outside is some sort of plastic, um, possibly made from a combination of carbon, hydrogen, and chlorine. So we can see the difference between metals and nonmetals and their properties inside a wire. We don't want the electricity jumping out of the wire, we just want it flowing through. Another difference is that metals let heat or energy flow through them very easily. And of course, the opposite, nonmetals do not let heat energy flow through easily, which is why many pots and pans are made of metals, the elements on the left. A cast iron is mostly iron, and stainless steel is a mix of iron and chromium. Something else about metals is that metals are strong, durable, malleable and ductile. And some of those words are a little confusing, so this just means they're long-lasting, durable means long-lasting, and then malleable and ductile mean they're bendable and stretchable. They can do these things without easily breaking. Nonmetals are not any of those things. They are, they are easily worn away, they're not durable. You can't really bend them or stretch them without breaking them. They easily break, they are brittle. Like in a pencil, this is a form of carbon here. It's easily flaked off when you write, and it breaks pretty easily too, graphite. Sulfur, it, when it's solid, is this weird crumbly powdery thing. So it is not strong, long-lasting, or ductile or malleable at all. Here's sulfur, and up here is carbon. Metals have high melting and boiling points because the atoms in these elements are tightly packed together. And this just means it takes more energy to break the bonds in between them. And the bonds between those atoms, they need to start sliding around. Those atoms need to move around to go from a tightly packed solid to a loosey-goosey liquid. Metals are dense and nonmetals are not dense. They're not so tightly packed together. Nonmetals, on the other hand, have low melting and boiling points, which is why many of them are liquid or even gas at room temperature. If they're liquid, it means they have already passed their melting point, and if they're gas, that means they've already boiled off. Nickel is uh, an extremely tightly packed metal, it melts at 1,455 degrees Celsius and will boil off into a gas at 2,730 degrees Celsius. Neon, on the other hand, is a gas at room temperature because it melts at negative 248.6 degrees Celsius and it is boiled off to a gas at negative 246.1 degrees Celsius. So room temperature is well above that, it is already a gas. And let's just look at a couple more random things between metals and nonmetals. Metals can be shiny, sonorous, and some are magnetic. Sonorous is an adjective that just means some metals can make a sound when they're hit by something. They sort of resonate and make a sound. Nonmetals are dull, not sonorous, and zero. None of them are magnetic. These coins, you can see coins can be shiny and Almost all coins are mixes of metals, and a mix of different metal is called an alloy. It gets some properties from the metals that are added into it, but they're shiny. Here, these three elements, iron, cobalt, and nickel, are the magnetic metals. 
So if you have an alloy with one of these metals in it, there's a good chance it will also become a magnetic alloy. Metals and nonmetals. Metals are left of the zigzag line and nonmetals are right of the zigzag line. Metals are conductors of heat, energy, and electricity, and nonmetals are insulators of heat, energy, and electricity. Metals are bendable, stretchable, malleable, strong, and durable. Nonmetals are the opposite. Brittle, not strong, not durable. Metals have high boiling and melting points. They're very dense materials. Nonmetals have low melting and boiling points, and they're less dense, less tightly packed. Metals can become shiny. They, some of them are sonorous, and some are also magnetic, whereas nonmetals are dull, not sonorous, and none of them are magnetic. See you guys in the next one. Bye!